Welcome to the On The Edge podcast with your host, Scott Groves. So is there like a series of commands that you go through to turn them on from like, I'm thinking about Mike Tyson, right? Get into a ring. Yeah. And he would tell these stories of like, yeah, you know, when I was in the dressing room, I'd be a normal human. And then once I start swaying and punching the wall and warming up, I just yeah. turn into an animal. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that's really scary. The thought of Mike Tyson as an animal. <laughs> but right? um, yeah. is good. there like a series of commands you give them to turn them on? Like if, if you were at home and it's just in chill mode and my kids are over there playing and then you hear, you know, somebody break the glass at the back window. Yeah. What happens for him to get stimulated and turn into aggressive dog? Yeah, so, like, it's it's more, again, like, the dogs really understand context, right? There are things that I would say within the sport mm-hmm. to, like, be like, oh, like, watch him, you know, um, or I can give him a command to, like, go and run up and bark but not bite. Do you give um, the commands in German since everything's based uh, in Germany? Some some people do. Okay. Um, I do some of them in German and some of them in English. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can do you can do German, you can do English, you can do Belgian, um, you can do all all kinds of stuff. You can do Spanish if like you spoke Spanish. Yeah. Because um, the idea is like if you tell somebody if you tell a dog to attack somebody else and he knows all of his commands in German. And I'm yelling him in English to stop. He won't stop because that's not the command he knows, right? He, he, that dog don't give a shit. Whether you know the <laughs> words or not. You know what I mean? These dogs know how to work. And, and a good dog, they're not they're not listening to the guy that they're biting. It doesn't matter if you know the magic words. It's not like that, you know? Oh, got People it. think like, oh, you're going to, like, I'm going to come and control your dog because I know your words. It's like, no, you're not. You don't have the relationship with my dog. You don't have the understanding of what we're doing. Yeah. He doesn't know you. You know right. what I mean? If I gave you the leash and said, hey, you know, go with it, go with them, like, yeah, he, you could work him and he would listen for you. Some dogs won't, but, like, my dog would. Yeah. But if me and you were fighting, like, my dog's not going to stop because you're asking him to stop. Yeah, you know? dog's ripping my leg off. <laughs> yeah, my yeah. calf is gone. Yeah, so, like, if, but if I was, like, in the house and, like, I heard a noise, I would just kind of act suspicious and he would pick up. I'd be like, what is that? Right. Did you hear that? And like he he switches on fast because like I have had that happen before, right? In like a, in an old house that I was at, it was in kind of a sketchy neighborhood, and I actually had like a temp break in a couple times, but while I was gone, um, but one one time like we heard a noise or whatever, there was a big bang, something outside, and I'm like, what is that? And he like got up and he starts like low crawling almost <laughs> like a panther, yeah. And like when it's dark in the house and he's all black. Dude, it is scary. Like I'm like, okay, he's gonna go and I'm like I'm like, go see. And he like ran out there. He's he's like super confident. Um, yeah. that's a that's a huge thing too, is like genetics and dogs, it's it's super important, right? It controls so much of, of what's going on there and why they do things. And there's dogs that just don't have don't have confidence, right? Poor breeding. A lot of things can go on where um, dogs become super nervy, anxious, all these things. And that's why they do so much testing when they're doing people for sport or people for military and working dogs, police dogs, all that. They go through rigorous testing to test the dog to see what the genetics are because they can do all the training in the world. But if the genetic baseline isn't there, the dog will fold under pressure. You know what I mean? Just like people yeah. too. So this is like the classic nature versus nurture, right? Exactly. If, if you had to assign a percentage, like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go get a, a mutt at the pound to like come stay in my house, not attack my kids but be a little, you know, skeptical of anybody walking near the property line. What percentage of that do you think is like genetics? I mean, they're going to get lucky or I'm not. And what percentage do you think is like, okay, this can actually be trained and executed. Is it like 50, 50, 90, 10? Like, what do you think? It's yeah. It's for like a dog. That's going to be like protective and like have the good confident, like have everything that you would want to like be a good, like protector. It's, it's super, super genetic, you know? Really? Yeah. Like, like my dog with how just how he is and who he is he could just have gone to like a family and not done any training and they just like feed him cookies and hang out with him and if somebody broke in the house i guarantee that dog would nuke somebody right. like just just how he is and how confident he is and his natural kind of curiosities and desires like he's it, like almost nothing startles him right yeah. he can hear a noise or if he hears fireworks or a gunshot and he just kind of like hmm, what is that like he's like right. a, he's like assessing it Right. But then if he, I've seen him when somebody sketchy walks up behind me and he just kind of like his body language just changes. Like he just knows what his role is. You know what I mean? And, and yeah. that wasn't something that I taught him. Right. I taught him specific details within the bite work and within certain things and obedience and control. But everything was in him to do all of this stuff. Right. right. So it's super, super genetic. Right. You're not going to take a dog that doesn't have the genetic for it and do like super fancy good training. It doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. The dog will just fold under pressure. Somebody comes in and they 
you know, they come running at you, that dog's going to tuck tail and run. Yeah. You know? So can you get genetically lucky with mutts or is it oh, like yeah, you yeah. have to go with a oh, purebred yeah, dog? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, so you, you could can, pick something yeah. up at like a kennel or a <clears throat> yeah. mixed breed and it's like yeah. the dog's either going to have the potential to be a superstar or not. Yeah. Yeah, for you know, sure. We're not that... Hey, this quick interruption is brought to you by me, Scott Groves, the host of the On The Edge podcast. This podcast is brought to you by me. Uh, I'm a loan officer who can help you with a mortgage in all 50 states across the United States. I also coach loan officers. So if you are a home buyer who's looking to get a mortgage, if you're a realtor who's looking to partner with an awesome loan officer, or if you're a loan officer looking for coaching, get in touch with me. It's those sources of revenue that allow us to produce this podcast and get out a new episode to you every week for the last couple of years. So if you're looking for a mortgage, if you're looking for a mortgage lender to partner with, or you're looking for a mortgage coach, I'm your guy. Now back to your regularly scheduled programming. For or against, maybe you can make both arguments, for and against like breeding dogs and creating You know, I always try to think of like, where is maybe a viewer like rolling their eyes like these evil people are promoting puppy mills. Um, (laughs) Can you explain that concept and maybe where that comes from? The good, the bad, the ugly. Yeah. So when when I talk about like breeders, I'm talking about like ethical breeders that are doing pretty like small scale things. They don't have hundreds of dogs that they're just like breeding back to back to back on their cycles. Right. They really good breeders. They care for their dogs. They're their own pets. And they take care of those dogs for their entire life, right? They're Got females. It. They're going to give them time in between breedings. Um, and, like, those those dogs live, like, a really, really good life, the people that care for them, right? Um, the argument kind of against breeders is, like, oh, like, the shelters are so full. Like, we need to just adopt all those dogs because, like, don't buy a dog. Just go and adopt one, which right. you still have to buy it, you know, 99% of the time you're still buying a dog. Right. Um and a lot of those dogs are coming from what like people that are breeding right backyard breeders dogs that have bad genetics right so people that are just mixing dogs up and then they have puppies and then the the puppies have crazy anxiety or they're aggressive or just have all these weird things and then they fill the shelters right because not many people are are getting rid of like if they're you know if they're doing okay they're not getting rid of their really good dog right right right. you know what i mean yeah their family pet yeah it's like dogs drive them crazy um (laughs) So, but the problem is, is that the shelters will never be empty, right? These dogs come in from all over the place. There's, there's shelters that import them from other countries too, right? So it's just, it's just Wait, nonstop. What? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, cause other countries won't put <clears throat> down the dogs or why do they import? Yeah. Yeah. Cause like, so, so certain big shelters, it's, it's a business too, right? They, they're in the business of getting dogs in, helping them, trying to find them families, hopefully, right, doing all the good things. But there's a lot of horror stories out there too, right, telling them not good backstories, backstories that are just lies. You know, this dog was, you know, they have like a big sob story and and then um, they make the people feel, you know, guilty and bad and they're like, oh, this puppy's so sad, like, let's get him, right? But there's a lot of places that they, they bring in dogs. When the dogs start getting low, they bring in more dogs. So mm. it's, it's a thing that's not, it's not just ever, they're not just all going to be like the shelters aren't just going to be empty one day. Right. Right. I, and th- I'm <clears> not, I'm not against shelters. Those people do amazing work. All the people that foster, right. Don't get me wrong. Shelters are a great place because things do happen with dogs and they need places to go and they need to be safe. So they're not just out running around. Right. right? Um, but it's the, how we get better dogs and dogs that can stay in homes is with proper breeding. Right. It's the only way that you have, solid that you can tell with you're going to have what the temperament's going to be like we ha- we we know what we can predict right yeah if you get a good mic up a little bit if you get a good well-bred yeah. rottweiler you know you know the the traits that it's going to have basically yeah. and they vary a little bit within that but again it's pretty standard along the way right you get yeah. a cattle dog they're going to have very specific traits right border collie very specific traits our body our border collies the one that have like unlimited energy like you yeah. have to throw them the frisbee or yeah. they just lose yeah. their so shit the, so those dogs were bred to herd sheep and cow, right? They're running like miles and miles and miles every yeah. single day on a huge I don't think it would be an exaggeration to say 100 miles a day. Like yeah. you, I think yeah. you're about yeah. to say like yeah. hundreds of yeah, miles exactly. a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. probably true. Yeah, and, the, and, and those dogs are super well-trained and they have the genetic desire to do that, right? Run around, chase things, bite things, right? So then they come <laughs> here, somebody pulls one from a shelter, and they like it because it's cute and they don't really know anything about border collies and they live in an apartment and the dog barks at other dogs so they can't take it on a walk because they're afraid that, you know, he, maybe he's aggressive or something. 
And then this, imagine that dog. He's a super athlete. She's yeah. a super athlete, whatever yeah. the dog is. And they want to run and bite and chase things and be out in nature and smell the fresh air and be with their people, right? And interact. Right. That's a huge part too. And then they're sitting on the couch all day, right? And they're just going crazy. Yeah. You know be like, I mean? It's like being in a prison cell. I was going to say, it'd be like trying to make LeBron James like a video game player. He, yeah. He would lose his mind. Yeah. Yeah. You can only play video games of basketball, right? You yeah. Can't yeah. Play the real <laughs> you thing. can't play the yeah. He'd lose his mind. Yeah, he'd go yeah. crazy. Yeah, exactly. Um. So you mentioned. Do you have any ideas with like, we'll just call it basic training, right? Like th these aren't the Delta force of dogs, but like basic training, how many commands you can get them to understand or like kind of like, like your basic suite of like, all right, Scott, I'm going to take your new dogs. I'm going to bring them back in six weeks. They're going to be basically under control. And then here, we're going to have some follow-up plan for you. Yeah. Is it like they can, they can understand three commands, 30 commands? Like uh, what's yeah. So, so on the extreme end, so there's different intelligence in dogs, just right, like right, people. Just like yeah, um, I, I'm like but, a two command type of guy. <laughs> right. So there was actually a border collie named Chaser, and this guy, this guy had her, and he wanted to teach the dog different like words and commands for different things, and so he basically just had buckets and buckets of different like plush toys that were different things like a plush cheeseburger, a plush banana, a plush bat, like just all different, whatever kind of like stuffed animals that you could have okay. and different things. And he would assign a specific word. Like if it was a taco, he would call that thing taco or kitty or the heart or whatever it was. Um, and that dog understood uh, well over 2,000 words. What the fuck? And it was complex too. It wasn't just like he, the dog understood the words. He could give the dog different commands within a sentence to go and do to that. So he could say he would be behind a, like a wall and he would be with the dog and he would say, uh, go find taco, go, go bring taco to me, go bring taco. And the dog would go and pick up the taco and then bring it out to of him like 2000 plus. No, no, no. He would oh. put like a few out at, at, oh, okay. at a time. Right. But Got the dog it. has specifically know the name of that one toy. Right. And then he would say, go bring it to me. And the dog would go around the dog would bring it to him. And then he'd say, okay, Go, um, go nose the heart, go nose the heart. And the dog would go over and then bump the heart with the nose. So the dog is understanding different concepts of what to do with those specific words, not just like go get each toy. He had right. specific different things that he could do to each toy as well as, so this dog understood thousands of, of that's going to be like dance, the right? Einstein of dogs. Though, yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's, so that's uh, again on the extreme. And again, we don't need that for everyday life. Right. <laughs> right, most, right, right. most dogs, are I gonna, don't have 2000 things yeah, in my house. Most right dogs now. are going to be fine with like five to 10 basic commands. Right. Got it. Sit, come stay down. Uh, you know, the recall come, attack. uh, heal, you know, attack. If it's a protection dog, yeah. Like they're going to have more commands obviously, because right. they're going to be doing more complex stuff But yeah. For like a regular house dog, they're going to have like 10 kind of formal commands and then, leave it, you know, stuff like that out, um, go away. You know, you can have a command for them to like run away. Um, just, you know, you can make them do anything you've seen them do and put a word to it. So it just kind of depends on what you want. But for most basic people, yeah, it's like five to 10 words, the basic stuff. And then I always tell people, look, you're going to have these formal commands and these words that you know and how to communicate with the dog in this very specific way. But you're also just going to be hanging out and talking with the dog, just like we all do. Right. I, I give my dog, when we're in the house together, he doesn't have any collars, leashes on anything. He's hanging out with me. I almost never use any formal commands that he knows, like for when we're doing actual like training stuff, right. right? I'm just like, hey, buddy, come on, let's go inside. And he's like, oh, let's go inside. Okay, cool. Right. And then I'm like, hey, you ready for your By the food? way, I like your dog voice. You're like, yeah, come on, Right, let's go. yeah. Like, you know, like that's, it's, I just picture him doing that, you know, my dog totally. cutter. Yeah. <laughs> Is any dog beyond saving? Like, is there some that just have to be put down? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's some that that get there eventually, and there's, I mean, there's so many different reasons that we could go into, but for the most part, most of them aren't there. Yeah, you know, um, one one big issue that can happen within dog training, um, and it can happen on there's so. You, I know you don't know specifically too many deep things, but there's kind of like wars going on within the dog training community. And there's like force free people that don't want to use tools in specific ways and just want to use like food and positive reinforcement. And then there's kind of the balance trainers that are willing to use tools and kind of, when you say tools, do you mean like those collars that have like the little spikes yeah, on them? Or prong, you, collars, prong collars, e -collars yeah, okay. different things. Um, and, so there's kind of, you know, sides that people get on and they go back and forth, right? Um, 
how we do things and t- do things in within TWC is is kind of different. Like we would be considered balanced trainers because we do use tools, but how we use tools and how we do kind of the entire foundational learning of the dog is completely different. Um, and so, you know, within that, there can be problems where if somebody is just doing like force free stuff, and you know, maybe they've been training dogs for five years and they, you know, know how to do obedience and know how to train the dog to do specific things. And then they get an aggression case where like, you're not going to fix it with giving the dog a cookie. You know what I mean? There's things that have to happen. There's, there's boundaries that have to be set and there's very specific ways that you have to go through it depending on what the dog is, what they're showing, what they're doing. Um, and if you don't know those things, it can seem like the dog is just unsavable, you know, just too aggressive, right? There's dogs that, um, have killed dogs that can be trained that can be okay right in certain situations and actually be livable and safe and and do all these things right um but again yeah you have to look at the dog you have to make sure that you know health issues are taken care of the dog's not in pain there's so many weird things that can happen right um there are rare cases where there's like neurological things where something's just like off in the brain of the dog right but again this stuff is like pretty rare yeah. And it can be talked about as like a pretty like hot topic and some things will get, you know, pushed into those categories that aren't really that, but they'll get blamed on that because it's a better story than like, well, the dog was just untrained and didn't have a purpose and started going crazy. And when he lashed out, he learned that he could make people, you know, go away or yeah. do whatever he could get what he want. And then the dog just kept escalating because it was within him to have that confidence of like, no, I'm going to run the house now. Right. right, right, right. Yeah, and it, it can be scary, you know what I mean? And people don't know what to do. They have this animal. They're not trainers. Yeah. So, yeah, it can be it can be interesting for sure. Interesting.